Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's video, we're talking about data management and artificial intelligence, and how optimal data management supports optimal use of AI in your business. In other words, if you're not handling your data in the right way, you're probably going to be struggling with AI. To discuss that, I'm joined by a major industry expert. With me is Krishna Subramanian, co-founder and chief operating officer of Comprise, a company specializing in unstructured data management. Krishna, thrilled to have you with us today. Thank you, James. It's very exciting to be part of your new venture. <laughs> Great. All right. So first, current events. Uh, what about DeepSeek? Obviously, I'm sure you've seen the headlines. Everyone has. What's your take in terms of how this small Chinese company has, has taught the industry about AI model training? Seems like they've come up with a far more efficient uh, way to extract data from, from, from information. Yeah, it's very interesting, James, because, you know, um, I think uh, what DeepSeek has shown us is that uh, you can actually build models with fewer parameters, lighter weight, with less cost. And over time, everybody knows that's going to happen. You know, the cost of AI training is going to come down. And more importantly, I think we all know that 95% of the AI market is not going to be model training. It's going to be really more reasoning. It's using models inferencing. You know? right. And for that, I, I think there's another trend uh, related to DeepSeek, which is around smaller language models, mm -hmm. you know, which is going to become more important for the enterprise. And it's not going to be about performance. You know, it's f funny about the small language models. I hear so much about that. I, I thought the year 2025 was going to be the year of agentic AI, and certainly that's a big trend. But I think the year of 2020, the year 2025, right, really might be the year of the small language model. Yeah, they go hand in hand, you know, because a small language model, basically what it is, is uh, it's using fewer parameters. It's easier to train. It's It knows less because it's using fewer, fewer parameters. So it tends to be more task oriented, uh, but it's also more precise because you can do more reasoning. It has less hallucination. Uh, and because it needs less resources, it's easy to even run it on a on a cell phone or in a self-driving car. And in most enterprises, I think what you'll see is a mid-sized version of it, you know, MLMs, medium-sized learning models that are running in their corporate data centers, which is easier than to connect to corporate data in a more secure way. Mm -hmm. So it's all going to come down to, you know, the corporate data and, you know, you know mid-sized models running in their environment for specific tasks. Well, and, and the small language models tend to hallucinate less, correct? Yes, they, they because they have fewer parameters, and also because it's easier to uh, easier to guide, you know, what they're doing, and it's easier to kind of show reasoning steps. Yeah, they tend to be, you know, more precise. You know, one last thing before we leave this topic, I find this really fascinating. I, I see this future, perhaps when. Each one of us would have our own small language model, our, our own personal language model. I mean, and then it's, it's basically all about our life. Does that make any sense at all? Absolutely. I think what will happen is, I mean, it's just like computing. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know, um, James, but like, you know, a few years ago, I think like like 25 years ago, if you told somebody that your cell phone is going to be actually a computer or even that your phone will be in your pocket and you'll do things other than make a phone call on your phone, <laughs> you might not really believe it, right? But mm -hmm. now look at it, right? When we think about computers, we have a computer in our phone, we have a computer you know, in our TV, we have a computer at our desk, you know, and then we have a computer in a data center. And that's what's gonna happen with AI. There's gonna be models doing different tasks you know, that are running in different places and also, everybody thinks AI is generative AI, but it really is not, right? Because there's machine learning-based AI, predictive AI, that already you're using in many forms, and you may not even know it. Interesting, yeah. All right, so let's talk about uh, data management and AI. A lot of companies focus on AI performance, like you know the fastest GPU speed, but Gartner research shows that data management is actually more critical for enterprise AI success why why is this so in your view? Yeah, if you think about it, uh, James, you know, already a lot of these models have been trained on all the publicly available data. So if you're a business and you want to gain a competitive advantage using AI and you just use a pre-trained model, 
it's not really going to do anything more for you uh, than it would do for anyone else because it doesn't have access to your data. So what's really different, how you can use AI to your advantage is by using your data with AI. Uh, and that's why Gartner uh, found that more than performance or storage capacity, it's data management that's really going to make the difference with AI. And given that 90% of that data is now unstructured, uh, this is why unstructured data is sort of the crown jewel for AI. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's I mean, stop for like a primer, the 101. I'm sure people know what structured and unstructured data is. But of course, unstructured data is data that doesn't fit into a clear format or schema. Uh, structured data fits in every cell of an Excel spreadsheet, but unstructured data is looser. It might come from social media. Am I, am I correct in that, Krishna? Yeah, exactly. Unstructured yeah. data is basically anything that's not a spreadsheet, not a table, not a database. That's probably an easy way to think about it. Like this video you're recording right now, this is unstructured data. Right, right. Um, all right, so you, you said that 90% of data is unstructured. So tying unstructured data to AI with proper data governance and security is key for a business. That's, that's your, your quote. I know this is core to Comprise's mission. How can companies do this? But I think my real question is, what's your advice to companies to best manage unstructured data to get the most from their AI use cases? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, unstructured data, because it has so many formats, it could be video files, audio files, it could be generated by your genomics application, it could be generated by users and documents, and, and you know, it's in so many places. So the first thing you want to do is have a way to look at all your unstructured data, get analytics on it, know how much unstructured data is in your organization. Then you want to start classifying that data. You know, do you have sensitive data? Because you know, sensitive data needs to be handled differently. Can you uh, can you start bringing some structure to the unstructured data? So one of the things comprise like our product does when you point us at all your data, we create a global meta database of all that data. So we start bringing structure to it. You know, so we say, okay, this video was made by James. It was made on this date. This was the topic. You know, this is how long it was. This is a JPEG file or an MP4 file. So you start knowing those things about all the data, uh, and then then you th then you have a base through which you can search. You can find the right data. You can feed it to AI, and then you want to enrich metadata based on what the AI told you because. You know, that's the other thing. Unstructured data, you want to discover more things about it over time, and you want to keep enriching your metadata information that you have. So really, it's about having that map of the metadata. Without that, you're lost. That's kind of what you're saying. One that's exactly things. right. That's yeah. a great way to put it, James. Yeah, metadata is sort of the structure is the key to unstructured data. You know, it's kind of like the secret key that unlocks unstructured data. But of course, then who in the who in the company creates that map, or or is that a comprised idea? Yes. So you know uh, that's an excellent question. It's kind of like a map that is getting built over time. You know. So imagine like you know you kind of have a few clues. You know, like your storage system has a few clues about the data. Mm -hmm. So you start with that metadata, but then you enrich it. You know, you, like you you look at the file, like you look at a video. And we might say, okay, this is a video with, um, you know, a skyscraper background, you know, so then we save that information, you know, then maybe some other thing we learned, okay, this had PII in it, then you save that. So you're actually kind of building the map over time. Uh, and that's why AI, you know, traditional ETL doesn't work for AI. You know, in AI, you don't just load data somewhere and leave it. Uh, with AI, it's iterative. One AI process might learn something about the data, which you want to remember and feed to another AI process, which might do something more with that data. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So e ETL, extract, transform, and load, that does not work with AI the way it did in the old days, pre-AI, you're saying? Right. It's kind yeah. of a different ETL. It's it's an iterative ETL, which includes metadata you know, extraction, metadata curation, and you know metadata enrichment, uh, so that that's the kind of workflow you need for AI. Mm -hmm. oh, what about the future of, of unstructured data and, and man, unstructured data management AI? I mean, I think companies always are always looking for the future. So, what do we see coming, and, and any specific milestones or developments you, you foresee in this area? 
Yeah, I think the you know the first uh, it it sounds kind of basic, but I think the 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 first thing organizations are going to do is just you know prepare data for AI. We're, even though there's all this hype about AI, if you really think think about an enterprise, mostly they're experimenting with AI and then they're using AI with more of their structured data. So they're using a chatbot to answer questions about you know how, yeah, about your you know, your personal, your account information, things like that, mm -hmm. right? So I think that the big changes we're going to see is classification of unstructured data and then starting to see some AIs, you know, that is, um, you know, going beyond just chatbots, you know, to actually doing tasks. Uh, and uh, I think you asked, what is the bigger trend? You know, what is the big thing that's going to happen with data management? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the big thing that is going to uh, happen uh, is that, um, you know, data, we've always said data is a, is the crown jewel of a company. It's a corporate asset. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think uh, McKinsey recently found that, you know, in most organizations, I think 70% of organizations, over 90% of their data is untapped. Mm -hmm. They're not using it at all. Right. I think that's the big thing that's going to change. Well, it, I, I would assume that job is going to be done by AI because the, uh, us poor humans really can't change that. It's sort of like, you know, we, we'll, we'll ask the, the model, we'll ask the, the data to be handling data. I mean, the AI, AI software needs to be doing that for us, correct? Yeah, AI will become part of the process. I do think that right now uh, people are thinking AI will do this and humans will do that. And I don't think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a human in the loop. Uh, you know, it's going to be AI is going to assist you with things and then a human's going to verify. So imagine like, you know, you, James, you're going to have like 55 assistants doing different things for you. Right. And you're still going to coordinate it. You're going to manage it. Uh, but you're going to now have all these extra resources at your disposal. So that suggests that we humans will not become extinct uh, or, or, or useless in the job market. So we'll still be needed even in the age of AI. Maybe less of us will be needed. Perhaps. Yeah, I think uh, it's an interesting uh, change because uh, we're all going to be managers. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, how do we become great managers when we've not done all the jobs ourselves? That's, I think, the question for our future generations, because, you know, the hands on experience that you gain while you earn your path to being a manager, you won't need that anymore. So what are you going to do? How are you going to gain that experience? Right. I've heard, for example, in the area of software development, it's harder to get a job as a junior developer because, of course, the mid-level senior folks can use AI to do some of the jobs that the junior developers used to do. So how do you become a junior developer if the junior developers are be if that work is being done by AI? Yeah, yeah. I, I see. It's, it's an existential question. We're, we're going to all have it to is. be managers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's fascinating. I don't know where it'll end. I mean, clearly, there's a little bit of overreaction right now. People are just slowing down all hiring at the lower levels just because they feel they can and but you know that dust is going to settle um you know and i i and i think we're going to evolve our skill sets there's going to be no junior developer mm -hmm. <laughs> so and how do you get there i think that's kind of the existential question uh it's going to be an interesting process to watch to be sure uh krishna thank you so much for sharing your expertise and please come back and talk with us again sometime thank you very much james